Okay, so the setup we have here on another Chariots of Fire episode is the Battle of Senzar. See, a lot of the battles use this blank map. Uh, this is going to be a climactic battle between Egypt and the Mitanni. Uh, Egypt continues to spread northward. Um, and I guess this is kind of the uh, pinnacle of their success. Uh, very, very linear setup. Now, this is a free setup scenario, basically. The lines where you see the, the forces set up is the furthest in that direction that you can set up. And there's some sort of a... Well, if you want a historical setup, you could follow this picture and kind of get an idea. And I, I mostly did. Uh, at least in terms of the major wings, I did make some changes, though. I wanted the infantry second line to be for the Egyptians to be uh, broader than it shows here. Here it shows kind of a dense pharaonic infantry with a second line of the infantry division itself. I felt like I want more coverage for my infantry and I've got more infantry overall than the Mitanni do. The Mitanni have more chariots however uh, and somewhat better ones. They have, well at least to this side a higher quality chariot corps. I'm actually not sure if they have more. It looks like it's actually about the same because their infantry is sitting in the center. Now this is a really iffy thing because it means that their overall commander who's over here in charge of this left wing for them is very far from their right wing which is also chariots and I found that giving chariots the momentum moves is good so I, I see that as kind of a weakness to this setup. This is actually close to what's suggested, though, uh, for the Mitanni. And I, I think that's going to serve them poorly. The Egyptians are supposed to have a slight advantage in this. They have more runner infantry. This is essentially the same exact army that we saw in the last battle over at Megiddo, except that they've assumed that the Egyptians have added more of the runner infantry. The runner infantry is very, very powerful. Uh, we kind of saw that where they break out uh, from, from the chariots and, and can attack the enemy's chariots directly, which is something that's difficult for the shock infantry to do. And if we look at the actual... Uh, you can see I've doubled up my tables. Uh, the reason for that is I can't take one apart, and I'm like, well, why clutter? I can't take any. By one apart, I mean these three that I've got set up. None of them will, will come apart. I've got to figure out how to do that. It may involve taking the leg off and replacing it with a different leg. The, um, the combat chart that these runner infantry use against straight chariot twos is very good the nine chart they don't have a superiority the way the uh, SIs do but they have enough speed that they can get close they can get close under the cover of the chariots and then launch an attack without the chariots being engaged because you'll notice uh, making the combined attack on them you still don't have an advantage and you're only on the five chart uh, with the shift for the extra unit puts you on the seven chart. It's not as good a chart. Of course, you have more units, so you can take more losses, as is usually the case with the great battles of history stuff. Having lots of units gives you bonuses more beyond whatever uh, strength comparison you have. Anyway, so far I'm really enjoying this system. Uh, I think it works really, really well. Uh, maybe better than some of the other great battles of history stuff, even though it's you know, it's got these significant differences, but it, it seems to play out really nicely. Uh, lots and lots of wings again, which I think helps uh, the situation when it's only just a couple of units, like in the, the introductory scenario. Uh, the chip pull just doesn't feel right, but when it's really a lot of units, you don't feel like, well, you feel like you've got a bit more randomness in terms of who goes when. Anyway, we'll get this started. Felt like I had to make big decisions right away. Uh, the Pharaoh got the initiative and picked his central wing, moved it forward, not far enough that he's in danger of being attacked right away. Uh, but then the question was with the Batani, do I want to move the infantry forward or not? <coughs> Overall, I think so. 
because I'm at a far enough distance that it's going to be painful for those chariots to charge forward and do a turnaround and come back. And overall, their melee capability is much, much worse than the infantry here. So, to me, that strikes me that uh, the infantry is the solid part of the army that I want to move forward, have that center forward. And then, if I get lucky, maybe I can swing into play and get into a position where I can kind of do outflanks because I have a longer line with the Mitanni. Well, the momentum moves came up, both of them, and they were both successful. And you have uh, the Mitanni throwing out something of a enveloping procedure on their left flank. The Egyptians threw a right, kind of refusing the flank very sharply, but now that uh, that particular wing just got a second activation and it, it may charge in and launch an attack here at this point. I'd kind of like to develop my infantry forward but you don't really want to pass a, an option I think. I'm not sure because there is an advantage to attack if I can launch it correctly. I've got to look because the, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can start doing some pass throughs or pass bys and hit the uh, wing there. Of course, that's going to open up my own flank. So I don't know. Well, I decided uh, not to advance with the Egyptians, and then the Mitami got their cav wing action again. And what we see here is this charge forward by the Mitami forces. This is just the moment before, right after uh, fire combat, but before shocks. There aren't going to be a lot of shocks, but I'm picking my attacks where I have runner infantry available. Either to do uh, the chariot plus runner attacks in some cases, or pure runner attacks. Basically, the decision there is someplace like here where the Egyptians only have a chariot, I think the runner alone is a better option. Uh, up here, though, where it's sort of mixed, I am thinking I want to attack with both uh, because the odds are better, um, but also more units, etc. I want to get the attacks in because I think the advantage goes to the attacker. When it's chariot two versus chariot away, when it's chariot plus runner versus chariot plus runner, uh, we end up with the seven chart, which I think is worth attacking on in this because I don't have to make a tactical quality check. One thing I learned from the last battle, those runners are dangerous. They're also less armored, so I'm shooting them rather than the chariots. The chariots are a tough thing to knock out, and there's no real advantage to knocking out uh, the enemy's chariots. In the other battle, uh, the chariots were the real target because breaking the chariot army, well, breaking 45 points of chariots was worth would knock out the entire army. In this one, there's no such limitation. So I'd rather get the easy points if I can, and we can see there's already a routed uh, Hitami runner up here. Now, I left my standard behind. I don't want to get it in the thick of the fight like I did last time. That was a bad move. Units are pretty much able to move when they're out of command. They just can't engage. they got to go seek out their, their command, which I kind of like. Um... What I don't like necessarily is that the routes all go back to the standard, wherever that is, which is kind of funky to me. Anyway, we'll see what these uh, what the effects of these shock attacks are. And it was a mixed uh, net effect here. We can see some breakthrough down here where they hit that one unit so hard. Up here, there were no real attacks. Over here, this whole line was attacked. However... Uh, it didn't go terribly well, where the runner infantry attacked alone, he had taken uh, some missile fire initially, so he's, he went running, and the other two didn't break the units, actually I think the runners ran in both cases here. So this is an interesting situation, it's basically an illegal situation, as far as I can tell. So, it came up engaged, and the rules say they have to fight each other, but they can't. Uh, I'm going to say they're not engaged that they didn't succeed, you know, the chariots kind of break off a little bit. But here we have runner-supported uh, chariots versus runner-supported chariots. That's allowed, so that's going to remain engaged. Loss-wise, well, we can see there's some routed units. These are all runners. 
Over here, though, we had one chariot die, and so we have 10 Egyptian losses, and I've got to look what my numbers are. Uh, the Egyptians are, are the reds this time. So they go down to 70, and the Mitanni, hey, there wasn't an Egyptian uh, label that I could cut out. If you follow my stuff, you know I like to do these little things. I clip one out. Well, they're really useful in this particular game because of the using the chart there. Anyway, I'll put the dead in place, and... We'll continue with this. It opened up pretty bloody already. Oh man, I just caught that I've been cheating. No big shock here, but uh, I haven't been paying attention. The runners don't move as fast as the chariots. They only move six. And in some cases, I've got runners who I think moved seven here. I know they did here. And I continued it here just to prevent myself from breaking the line too much because that just wouldn't have happened. We'll just write it up, uh, you know, as many things to the vagaries of uh, a tactical situation. It's, it's no big deal. I, I don't think it's going to heavily influence the effect of the overall battle, but eh, I hate when I catch myself. I also got an infantry action with the Egyptians and realized that la and moved them forward, chasing the chariots back. I realized recently that I screwed up in the previous battle. Yeah, a whole series of these things. Where uh, I didn't allow units to retreat through each other. They can. And in fact, as long as it's not infantry retreating through... Or infantry, um, it's pretty much safe. If you look at uh, the rules for movement and withdrawal... If I have it correctly, the stacking rules here. Combat uh, uh, units uh, can move or withdraw through friendly counters with the following effect. Cost an extra movement point if SI or HI units are involved. They take hits, but otherwise it's okay. These units are small enough they can go running through each other. So really the chariots are fairly immune to the infantry, which is not something that seemed to be the case in the last battle. Uh... I think mainly that worked in the Egyptians' advantage over at Megiddo, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, they're the ones who had their infantry really on the line for the most part. Although there was one case where uh, uh, an Egyptian uh, chariot got attacked by infantry, it probably couldn't have been. And there's the end of our positioning with the, uh, the Mitanni stretching out a little bit further, pulling their line. And, and expanding again with an outflank in mind. The one worked pretty well, I think. They want to hit again here, and there's less infantry to protect uh, the Egyptian center here. Uh, that's all the activations done, and now I've got some recovery. The missiles aren't going to be able to be recovered at this range, so I don't know. This little moved marker goes away, that much I know. But I don't think there's much mechanical action to go with this. That's one thing with this uh, this particular installment of the Great Battles of History. There's a lot less mechanical. You're not flipping units every every which way each turn. So, uh, you know, in, in some ways I think this is uh, a cleaner system for most people who want to play it. it. Yes, you have to do a little bit of memory. You may have to mark all your SI units as moved somehow. The out-of-command flipping doesn't do me a lot of good. There's, uh, I almost wish, I, I almost use those as moved, depending on how, how I want to handle things. I find the mixture is good. I can use these counters as moved counters when I have a whole formation moving. But when I want to do individual units, the flipping is uh, more convenient to me. And the out-of-command flip doesn't really do me a lot of good. I kind of wish there were a little out-of-command counters, sort of, because, well, uh, the couple units that are going to be out of command and I'm not going to be able to remember whether to do them might be worth marking that way. Uh, either way, it doesn't really matter. All right, on to the next turn, and I'm going to load this one up.